So your oil pan, or sometimes also referred to as just the sump, is just a dish-shaped piece of metal that attaches directly underneath your engine block or sometimes to your crankcase. And in between there, there's going to be a gasket, of course, to make sure no debris gets in and no oil gets out. So the whole purpose of your oil pan is mostly just to hold oil that is used to lubricate the engine. So one more thing your oil pan is actually used for is actually to cool down your engine's oil. So since it's located at the bottom of the engine while you're driving, air is going to be passing underneath your vehicle, therefore hitting that oil pan and cooling it off. Some vehicles actually have fins on their oil on the bottom of their oil pan to just give a greater surface area, therefore it will actually have better efficiency at cooling down your oil. So the whole system that we're talking about today is considered a wet pump system and it's pretty universal in every vehicle that's made today and all that means is that there's always going to be oil in the sump and compare that to a dry pump system where the oil is usually pumped to a different container and then it's shipped from there out to the engine. So if you were to look inside your oil pan, you may see some dividers in there. Those are called baffles. They're made to keep the oil from sloshing around. So say you're accelerating really fast or going around a corner really fast, all that oil would be able to move to one side or the other, front or back. And therefore, you probably won't be able to get actually oil circulating because the hose coming down to pick up the oil won't be thinking that there's any there because all of it will be to one side. So these baffles actually keep some of the oil in each little divider. Therefore, when you're accelerating and going around corners, your engine will still be circulating with oil. There will also be another piece of metal on the top of the oil pan just called a windage tray, which just prevents oil from sloshing up onto the crankshaft. There may also be something called a crankshaft scraper, which, well, scrapes excess oil off the bottom of the crankshaft's counterweights. So now at the weight bottom of your oil pan, there will be an oil plug. This is what you're going to remove if you ever want to change your oil. That way all your bad oil go out, you'll put the plug back in, and then you can fill the good oil back up. Some of the oil plugs actually have magnets on them that will collect debris that's inside of the oil pan. Therefore, it won't get circulated as well. So now in order to check your level of your oil, they have a thing called a dipstick, which is located at the top of your engine. It's going to be a long, thin piece of metal with a loop at the end, so you can put your finger in it and pull it out. And that piece of metal will go all the way down into your oil pan, and will have two little notches on it. Usually it says a max or a min, or just two little holes there. That'll be pretty much where you're going to want your oil level to be. So as long as it's in between those two notches, you're good to go. So now, in order to get this oil to lubricate the entire engine, which, by the way, is a completely above the oil pan, you're going to need some sort of pump to pump that up into the engine. Modern day vehicles have what we call a force-fed system, where oil is pumped or forced into the engine. So this is where the oil pump comes into play. It picks up oil from down in the sump, it circulates it through the engine, the oil drops back down into the pan, and starts all over again. Most oil pumps are going to be run directly from the crankshaft. So if the crankshaft and the vehicle is moving, therefore the pump is moving. So whenever the vehicle is moving, there's oil going to be lubricating it at the same time. Now all oil pumps nowadays are going to be called positive displacement pumps, which means that the oil that's going out is going to be the same amount of oil coming back in. So now the way it works is an oil pump actually sucks up oil from the sump through a pipe called the pickup pipe. That pipe sits just below the surface of the oil and is covered with a gauze filter at one end to prevent any large particles from getting sucked up into the pump. If that filter gets clogged for some reason, they actually have a bypass built into that pipe. Therefore, the engine oil can still get to the engine because it's definitely going to be a lot cheaper to replace a pump than it is to replace an engine. These pumps are actually made to work very well in high temperatures and high pressures, but sometimes the pressure can get a little too high. And instead of getting damaged, they actually have a pressure release valve built into them. So if it gets too much pressure built up, it will release that instead of damaging the engine again. So now, before the oil actually starts going into the engine, it has to stop at one place first, the oil filter. An oil filter is, well, just another filter that filters out even smaller particles that might have gotten through from the pickup pipe. So now, when you're done driving your vehicle and you shut your vehicle off, all that oil is going to want to drop back down into the sump. But that means when you start your vehicle up next time, there's going to be no oil in your engine lubricating at all until it starts getting warmed up, which is going to be really bad for your vehicle. That's why they built an anti-backup valve, which stops that from happening. It actually will just keep some of the oil in your engine once you shut it off. Now, if your oil filter ever goes bad and you don't realize it, there's actually a bypass for that as well built into the filter that will still allow oil to go through even though if it's unfiltered uh, to the engine. Therefore, uh, your engine can still run because it's definitely going to be better to run your vehicle with bad oil than no oil at all. So there you have it, guys. Everything you need to know about your oil pan, oil filter, or oil pump. 
Uh, just make sure to check your oil as often as possible. Usually every other time you fill up with gas is a good ritual to get into. So, and of course, make sure to change your oil on regular intervals, usually between three, five, ten thousand miles. Depends on what kind of oil you're using and how you drive and what kind of vehicle it is. But go by whatever it says in your owner's manual. Uh, it's just a good idea to err on caution and do it more often than not enough because I just showed you it's a lot cheaper to change your oil than it is to change your engine. We'll see you guys.